I love using Creative Fabrica, and I got a great question from a loyal viewer who asks, hey, if I download an image off of Creative Fabrica, how can I edit it? What are some easy tips for beginners? Maybe you don't have, you know, huge design skills. You haven't gone to the PhD University of Photoshop, for example. How can you make some simple edits to some Creative Fabrica designs? I'm going to cover that off in this video. Let's jump in. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is find my design. So on Creative Fabrica, I'm going to type in funny cat SVG, for example, and that's going to be a vector that's going to come back. So we're going to see here some vectors that have come back. Let's see here if something strikes my fancy. There is this holy Burma cat. I'm going to click on this and we're going to see that this gives us an SVG and I'm going to download this SVG. So I'm going to click on download and we'll grab it. Okay, so this is always a good thing when I open up the zip file and I see that there's different types of files in here. EPS file, JPEG file, PNG file, that kind of thing. So what I'm looking for is a vector. So that's going to be this Microsoft Edge HTML document. That's basically an internet file. It's a vector file. And then I've got a picture file, which is my PNG. So I'm going to do control A, highlight everything in the zip file. I'm going to copy it. And then I'm just going to move it outside of the zip file and paste it into a regular folder. Now that I've got everything pasted into my regular folder, I can go up to view and I can go large icons and I can see, okay, we've got some pictures, we've got a PDF file, an EPS file. So it depends on what you're using. So I'm going to show you two techniques in this video. The first one's going to be Photoshop. Okay, so whether you're using Photoshop or Affinity Photo, it doesn't really matter, but any graphics design software, typically the first mistake people make is they'll go file open and then they'll start editing the file. What I'd recommend instead is pick a template of what you're actually building. So for example, if I'm going to make a displate with my cat design on it, I'm going to select my displate template first and then from here I'm going to place the image inside on a new layer. So I'll go file and place. Now the file that I want, it must be an image file. So if I try to download, like if I try to place the vector file, it's going to say no. So what I'm going to do instead is I'll go file place and I'm going to select either the JPEG file or the PNG file. I always recommend downloading the PNG file using that instead because it typically will be a transparent background. So I'm going to place this file and now from here you can edit this design as needed using really two things. One is the eraser tool. So I'm just going to simply click on it, rasterize it, and I can use the eraser tool. I'll make the brush nice and big. And I can go in and I can edit this. I can you know, remove pieces of it. I can make the hardness 100% instead of 0%. And I can go in and I can edit this design. So I could remove this out, for example just like that. Now why would I want to do that for example? Maybe I'm putting in a picture so I'm going to do a black, I'm going to make a sign here and I'm going to make a, a shape and I'll add a new layer and I'll add a layer right like this. So I may want to remove out a piece of the design because I'm going to be putting something over top of it, next to it, that kind of thing and maybe I want to clean it up. So that is just an example of where you could remove a piece of the design here. Now the other option in addition to the eraser tool is the brush tool. So I could add in a brush. I want to make sure that my picture, my color is the exact same as my picture. So I'm going to click on the little eyedropper tool and then from here I can select the brush. So I'm going to make sure my hardness is 100%, my diameter is pretty big, my opacity is 100 and then I can go in and I could start designing here. I could start adding in stuff as well. Now I'm adding it all in on one layer which you may not want to do. So I'm just going to show you a new option here. I'm going to go in place this image one more time. So here's another way you can do this in Photoshop. I'm going to add a new layer on top of the old layer and then when I'm going in and I'm using my brush tool, so for example I'll go in actual pixels, I'll make it nice and big and then let's say I wanted to extend some of these out. So I'm going to make my brush a bit tinier and then I'm going to draw, for example, these way out. Let's say I wanted to make spiky. I know this is a crappy design, but bear with me. I'm just doing this here for illustration purposes. So let's say I'm drawing this and I'm trying something new and I'm not liking the way it's going. So I go back to the screen and I go, eh, that looks okay, but I don't really like it. Well, I can just delete out the layer. I can just turn it off and I can see exactly where I'm at. Now when you're done with this design, you could save it as a PNG file. File, save as, and then save it as a PNG and that will flatten everything down into one layer. So you could have multiple layers as you work on stuff. Another thing you can do is you can change the color, add in a layer. So this is just 
you know, this just becomes second nature. When you're making an edit, you add in a layer, and that way if you don't like the layer, it's not a big deal. You can basically go, you know what, maybe I'll change my mind and I'll get rid of it. So here, for example, I could make the eyeball yellow, and I could put this so that the color on the image is quite low, so maybe 20, 50 percent, something like that. So you could make it look yellow, but you can try it out, and if you don't like it, you simply just remove the layer, turn off the layer, you can change the layer, you can modify the layer, you can do all sorts of things to it, and then ultimately you can also just delete the layers and you can get it back to the baseline image. I highly recommend doing that when you're editing an image and then when you're done with it, that's when you save it as a JPEG file or a PNG file. Now if you're wondering how much that cat graphic was, the answer is for me it was nothing. It was free, it was included because I have a subscription with Creative Fabrica. If you're interested in Creative Fabrica, I'm going to put a link in the video description below. The All Access subscription, I think, is an absolutely fantastic deal. It gets you access to over a million things on here. Fonts, graphics, the list goes on and on. I do want to point out it is an affiliate link. That just means if you click on it and you buy the subscription or you buy anything on Creative Fabrica, I would receive a small commission. All right, now for the second technique, if you don't have Photoshop or Affinity Photo, you can always use Inkscape. So you've got two options here inside of Inkscape. The first one is let's edit the actual vector. So I'm going to go File and I'm going to Open. And what I'm looking for here is the actual vector file. So this is an Affinity Designer file. I could try that. There's also this one over here, which is an HTML document. That to me is the vector. So I'm going to click on that and we're going to see now the vector populates. Now I'm going to select it so we can see now the little arrows go around it and now I'm going to select edit paths by node which is on the left hand side and then when we can see here now there's a whole bunch of vector nodes that pop up so if this is not happening then it means you don't have the right type of file selected you need to pick a vector because a vector is the nodes it's mathematical formulas that, sh that tell the computer when to show graphics and when not to show graphics this is infinitely scalable super crisp super clear and you could edit this by simply dragging I'm just hovering over these little nodes and you'll see they'll turn red well I can simply just drag one of the nodes and make it longer select a node drag the node so you can do that you can also delete out a node and it's pretty easy to do what you do is you just highlight so I'm just dragging my mouse I'm just dragging it over a node it's gonna highlight the node and then I'm just gonna click the delete key and that just makes the node now disappear now you'll notice these two nodes now are now talking to each other because there's no third node in between it so what you can do is with these buttons these long winding magic wands here you can move these and that tells the two nodes how they're interacting with each other. So you can get pretty good at changing the way these nodes look by simply moving these. You can make these long and short. You can also move them around. So I recommend grabbing a vector someday and just spending an hour. Maybe you're watching a TV show and on the commercial breaks, just play around with it. Just try to make it look different and you'll get pretty good at moving these things around and you can be extremely accurate on how you would like these to look. I'm going to go in here now to the eyeball and let's say we don't want to have these two blank circles inside the eye. Very easy to do. I highlight it, delete it. Highlight it, delete it. Now the eye is clean. There's no actual reflection in the eye. So you can be extremely detailed on how you would like to go in here. You can also change the color inside of a vector. So I'm going to click on this vector and I'm going to select the color down below. Maybe you want to have a bright blue. Holy moly, look at that. What a difference that makes. So, you've, so again, there's all sorts of changes you can make inside of Inkscape, but the easiest ones is to go in and select the individual nodes simply by going Edit Paths by Node, and then you can zoom in. And you zoom in, by the way, by holding down the Control key and using the mouse scroll wheel. And then you can go in here and you can have some fun playing around with the way the vector looks. Now the second option, sub-option, is, is pretty rinky-dink, I'm not going to lie, but if you need to use this in a pinch, you can. So here I'm using Inkscape, which is designed for vectors, but I've got an image. For whatever reason, I have not traced the bitmap, so I'm just using straight-up image. What you can do is you can add layers on top of it and then export it as a PNG. So here's an example. I'm going to go Layer, Add Layer. It's going to add an image layer, and I'm going to pick up Above Current and I'm going to click Add. So now I'm in the layer above the current layer. I can add in a shape, for example. So on the left-hand side, I'm going to click the little circle, and I'm going to create a circle. So I'm going to pick yellow. I'm going to pick circle. Let's pick a circle like this, for example. 
and then I can simply move this circle over on top of the design. I'll click Control C and Control V. That's going to give me another one. And now the eyeballs are crazy. Now I can make this now. I could export this as a PNG. So over on the right hand side, I'm going to look for the export this document. And when I click on that, it gives me the option to export the document, the page, the selection. You'll notice the selection is not highlighted because I haven't selected anything yet. I could just export the cat. If I select the cat, now the selection option becomes available. I could also just select just the yellow and I could select that. I don't want to do that. So I want to select page because that's going to give me the whole page. And I'm going to see now it's 4,000 by 4,000. That's my page size. I'll select DPI 300. That's going to give me a huge document with the yellow eyes. And I'm exporting this now as a picture. So it's just going to flatten everything down. So here I am now exporting the document. It's pretty big. And we can see here now in Windows Explorer, I've got yellow eyes set up. It's 12,500 by 12,500. When I click on it, my photo viewer is going to show me this is my PNG file. It's so big, it actually doesn't show the white properly. Uh, but if I go back to the other one, you can see there's the original. There's the one with the yellow eyes. And this is a transparent background that I could use now. It's a PNG file and it's one just straight up image. So again, it's not a great workaround. I'm not suggesting it's some miracle tool, but if you're in a pinch and you wanna add things to a PNG file, you can do so directly in Inkscape. You can add in uh, other, either other images. You could add in a second image, a third image, a fourth image, or you could add in shapes as well. I hope you found that helpful. A few quick tips, a few quick walkthroughs on how you can change images if you're either using Inkscape or a graphics design tool like Photoshop or Affinity Photo. Here's another video on how you can supercharge your digital design skills, your graphic design skills, your creative design skills. I really hope you found this helpful. Thanks a lot for watching.